When it comes to flow, do you ever find yourself struggling to, where do I start, right? Like you can describe in words what you want, but you just don't know how to build it, right? What actions and triggers do you need? Well, we're going to take a look today at a new feature called Describe It to Design It. And it uses the same engine that ChatGPT does to just take your words and spit you out a flow that you can then finish configuring and put into play. And what we're going to do is we're going to build me a flow that is going to say every time I get an email from Chewy that has attachments, we are going to have those attachments uploaded to our team site because that's where he's supposed to put them anyway. And then we'll probably send him a message back and say, bad dog. Sound like fun? But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, let's describe it to design it in Power Automate Flow. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take advantage of this new built-in capability. We're going to go in, we're going to type in real words what we want, and then see what it produces. And then more importantly, see it to the end, right? Because, you know, it's not perfect, right? It's still in preview, but we're going to dive in and make it all work. Sound like fun? I thought so. Let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so over here on the desktop, we're at make.powerautomate.com, and we're going to click on Create. And so here you're going to see under Start from Blank, there is a fourth option right here now called Describe It to Design It. Now, it is in preview, so, you know, tread lightly. And those of you that are like in the GCC clouds and the government clouds, you might not have this yet. But most of us, we're having this, right? So let's dive in and use it. We're going to click there. And so what this says, hey, I'm going to build you a cloud flow with your own words. So we just go in and we're going to add the words. Now, if you're like, Shane, I don't even know what to say. That's fair. Remember that right here, they've got some different examples. So import data from an Excel file to a SharePoint list. Review more examples. Save Outlook email attachments when I receive the OneDrive. We can kind of do a version of that one. Now, also keep in mind that this is still in preview. So it works best with the Office 365 connectors. And if you're wondering, like it's not using ChatGPT under the hood, but it's using the same infrastructure, the same uh, algorithm type of stuff that it has, right? And what you can do here is how it works. And so you can go through all of these. And for example, you know, there's it is. It's using the OpenAI Codex, whatever that is, right? Who cares? But if you want to understand more, and I think it does, you know, it explains this only works in English right now. And, you know, um, can it automate all the applications and it really just works with the 365 ones. But you get the idea, right? There's some info here, but whatever, right? We want to build something. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to type out what we want. So what should we do? We'll do something around that Chewy email, right? So, so here we're just what we're going to do, right? We're going to, we're going to try. When I receive an email from Chewy with attachments, upload the attachments to SharePoint and send Chewy a reply. So here you can see, like, obviously it doesn't really know who Chewy is, but you know, whatever, right? We're going to try something. And you can see down there that it gives you some suggestions. So you might want to check these out, but I'm too lazy to read. I just want it to do the work for me. So I'm just going to press go or confirm, I guess. So it is going to generate and you can see that it is like, hey, there you go. The suggested flow for you is trigger when a new email arrives. Action is a for each because remember attachments come in as a table. So I kind of chose attachments because they are a little more complicated. So you can see how that worked. And then it's going to reply to the email and create a file. Great. That is a, that feels right to me, right? Or close. Now, if you didn't like it, you can say show a different suggestion, but I'm happy with that one. So I'm not going to do that. So now we're going to say next. So when you do this, it is checking to make sure that I have connectors already for Outlook and SharePoint. So if you didn't, you would need to set those up at this point. We've got them. We're good. We're going to soldier right through here and say next. So this last one here is like, all yeah, right. So then here are some of the settings that you need to configure, right? Because like it doesn't know what SharePoint site address I want. So I could just hit the drop down here and then it's going to offer me a bunch of SharePoint sites. And so we're just going to scroll down. We're going to choose our usual one, Power Apps Videos. Then it's going to say, all right, where do you want to put those? And so this is now when we hit the little folder icon over here, it is going to browse my um, SharePoint site we just gave it. And it's like, hey, they're shared documents. If I wanted to drill in, find a specific folder, I could do that, but I don't at this point, so we're just going to use share documents. Now, notice here it says, what's the file name and the file content? Well, I want that to be dynamic, right? I want that to come from the attachments. So in this case, I'm going to leave those blank. And I think this is a key like moment, aha moment for a lot of people, is that you can don't have to give it all the stuff, right? It's trying to help you say, hey, these are things I know you need, but at the same time, if you're like, well, I don't know that yet, or I know I want it to be dynamic, you can just leave it blank and say, create the flow. So now this is going to spin. This is going to create a flow. Honestly, I feel like it creates the flow faster than creating new flow does most of the time, but 
whatever. And so now you can see, yay, it's created. Who cares? Go away. When a new email arrives, and so here you're gonna expand this out. Now you'll notice that they got the include attachments, yes, and only with attachments, yes. So only the emails with attachments would trigger this, but it didn't figure out the from, right? So if I only want it to work from Chewy, then we're gonna to need to do that. And I think that's, that's reasonable. I don't really expect it to do it. But once again, remember, this isn't like just magic, or even though they use magic to describe it, it's not magic, but it's got us the right framework, right? So you do still need some flow skills, but it's put us in a really good spot. So that was really all we needed to do here, but we could continue to adjust things if we needed. Then if we look down here, so we'll kind of explore this one, expand this. So what it understood automatically is that the attachments output of an email is a table. Even if there's only one attachment, it still comes in as a table. So the way the flow has to be structured is it has to loop through that, right? You might not have known that. That might have been your sticking point. The beauty of this doing it for us, it put that in place. There's the create file, there's the SharePoint site we chose, there's the folder that we chose. File name and file content are blank. They are required, so we gotta put something there. So what I'm gonna do, put my cursor in here. And once again, you have to have some flow knowledge, right? But I know that if I look in here, there is going to be an attachment name. And so because attachment name is in the attachments table, it automatically just works. If it all of a sudden puts a second loop in there for you, you've done something wrong, right? But that's good. File content, oh look at that, it even guessed it's the attachment content as well. So there you go, that will create the file. So that should just take it, strip it straight out of the email, put it in there. And then if we go down at the bottom, it says reply to email. And so look, it already knows to reply to this email. So it's already put that message in there. And so then here we can just add our own little message, right? Bad dog, right? So some snarky message like that. And so the same thing, right? You can start to work through all of this if you needed to attach stuff, whatever you're trying to do, right? Like you, you're just configuring this action. It put the action here for you, you're configuring it, right? But I've literally never used reply to email before. So the fact it put it here for me and configured it, that was a giant step forward for me. But perfect, right? So now I feel like I've got a flow that's going to do what we want. So we'll just hit save. We could rename the same, but we won't. We'll say save. And so now it says, hey, we recommend you test it. And so what we'll just do is we'll go back here to the home screen, right? So the flow is live, it's turned on, it's, it's ready to go. So then I'm gonna say, hey, Chewy, send me an email. So let's switch over to Chewy real quick. Okay, so now we're logged in as Chewy, right? You can see he has the cute little Legos. There's his little face up there in the top right. And so then now what do we wanna do? We'll say just a new email. We're gonna send it to me. And then we're gonna say uh, your files. And then we're going to just do a couple attachments, right? So browse this computer, here on the desktop, maybe we'll send one of, you know, we'll send us a couple old school Chewy ones, right? So there's one attachment, and then we'll do another one, browse this computer, and we'll just use this baby Chewy one, right? So open that. So there you go, we've attached two different files. Remember when you're testing something like this, oh, attachments are a little weird, that can be even weirder when there's multiple, so just go ahead and test with a couple. But there you go, we will hit send, and now we'll switch back over to me. And after a few seconds, you're gonna see, like, I refresh my run history here, it ran. We click in here, we should be able to quickly look and see, does it look like it ran successfully? I mean, obviously it said it ran successfully, but I always feel better kind of jumping in here. We sent two emails, so we got two create files, and it sent a reply back to Chewy. All right, let's switch over to Chewy real quick and make sure that he got the reply. So here you can see your files, and you can see bad dog, Right, so perfect, reply there. And then let's switch back over as me. And here logged in as me, we can see that on the SharePoint site, there's a picture of Baby Chewy, and there's the other one with a really bad name, but if we click on Baby Chewy just to make sure it works, right, because always validate when you save with flows that the files work. There is the adorable puppy when he was a tiny little guy. And there you go, we have got what we want. We'll close that out, and we can switch back over to our flow. Awesome, right? So in a matter of minutes, we were able to just describe in words what we wanted and we were able to get our flow produced for us. So this to me is kind of exciting, right? Like this whole idea to describe it, to design it, and this is just in preview state, but so far all the test runs that I've done, I mean, I haven't overly tested it, but I've tried a bunch of random combinations of things and so far it's figured out what I meant. It's given me the right pieces. I've had to add a little glue, you saw that, but you know, it is doing a great job. So kudos to the Power Apps team for this.
Also, there's another feature that's in the same um, tone that I have not, we're not gonna talk about today, but I just wanna show it to you guys real quick. So I'll create a flow. We'll just manually trigger it. We'll say create. Remember, I always use manual triggers when I'm trying to just quickly get in and test an action. But if we do a new step here, and so then let's just throw a compose right here. Do, do, do. And so then if we click in, um, so just remember that under expressions now, there was format data by example. So similar vein, right? This idea that, uh, you know, you can provide examples of what you might want, right? So we can click in here. And so then, you know, if we just do what would be a, um, a good one like username. So here we're gonna say, all right, example value. So what would it come in as Shane Young? And then we'd say, hey, our desired output is Shane. And then say get expression. And so it's going to show you, look, so splitting on the space. So that is not exactly how I would write it, right? I've done one before. If you look up there, I've got a video that I talked about how to split that out. But I can tell you enough to know that that would absolutely work, right? So interesting, right? We're not going to get into that one too much today, but I wanted you to see that, you know, you're going to continue to see more and more of this AI sneaking into Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, right? Trying to make our lives a little bit easier. Microsoft invested $10 billion into ChatGPT and the OpenAI engine. So they're going to get their money's worth. So that's what I've got for you today. Hopefully this gets you inspired to go and play with that feature a little bit. Or if you're you know, a newer user to Power Automate Flow, hopefully it enables you to write better flows, right? Because it gets you three steps further down the road. It's not getting you all the way, but it's getting you much further. So now you're just kind of filling in some blanks. Now, with that, I guess I'm just going to say, Thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that have subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool. Thanks and have a great day.